The curbs have been painted, the signs have been cleaned, and motorbikes have started to mysteriously appear in local shop windows. That can only mean one thing. TT is back. So time then to film a bit of a TT 2022 visitor's guide. This video is aimed at anyone who's coming here for the first time, anyone who's a repeat visitor, and also anyone who unfortunately can't make it here this year. I'm going to try and cover all the most uh, the basic things about the TT, from how to get here, uh, the race format, what to expect, and the events, the many events around it that are worth going, uh, places to visit. But I also want to cover some of the more sort of serious things uh, basically you know how to stay safe while you're here and how to live with good memories and all your limbs intact now i know that sounds dramatic but i followed the tt and worked around it and in various ways for almost well over 20 years now and i've learned a lot of things along the way seen a lot of things happen i don't want any of this to sound head teachery and you know if you come here you must not do this no this is seriously purely from experience i want everyone who comes here to have the best possible time i'm not paid by the organizers i'm just a little resident who loves the tt and who wants everyone who comes here to have fun and stay safe so you'll see later in the video what i mean by that and there's a few things you know that are very very different here than they are at any other motorsport event you may have been to before especially if you're a first time visitor i'm going to put chapters on the bottom so if there's any topics you're particularly interested in you can hop straight to them or anything you don't like just skip it and i'm also going to be around doing tt not quite sure what i'm going to do yet but you know if you like isle of man and tt related content you can always subscribe to my channel and you know keep an eye out so without further ado let's have a look at what to expect from tt 2022 The program will tell you that the TT this year runs from the 28th of May until the 10th of June. But of course, anyone who knows the event will tell you that in reality it runs from the 27th of May until the 11th of June. That's because we also have the pre and the post TT races. Now those don't take place on the mountain circuit, instead you have to come down here to Castletown to watch the racing on the shorter Billon circuit, which many of you will know from the Southern 100 races. The pre and the post ET races are really, really worth watching. It's a packed field, it's fast, exciting racing on a shorter circuit with all your favorite riders coming here for a warm up and then to have another go after the TT. And it's a wonderful day out if you just come down here, grab a pint, sit at the side of the road and get some more racing in. Of course, where the main event is concerned, the TT as always runs over a fortnight, which we split into practice week and into race week. In practice week this year, there are six practice and qualifying days. And then in race week, there are four race days. The TT, of course, does have a fixed schedule, which is in the program and it's published everywhere. But it's very likely that this schedule can change, that it's either delayed or some races are rescheduled. The most common reason for that is, of course, the weather. In the olden days, they used to race in the wet and in the rain, but those times are long, long gone, as are the times of morning practices. They're only uh, daytime and evening practices now. So these days they really need a dry track and that means they will not go out if the track is damp. So it may actually happen that you come to the track, it looks dry, it looks okay, there's no rain, but they're still not racing because the track may still be wet from the night before. There was a shower at other ends of the island and they just, it's not safe enough to do it anymore. The machines simply have gotten too fast and the riders are simply not willing to take that risk anymore. The TT is risky enough as it is and you know there is a limit I think somewhere and it's wise not to race in the rain or in the wet anymore. This of course means that practice and race days can move. In the olden days we never used to race on Sundays and when I say olden days this was only a couple of years ago actually. These days they actually do reschedule races to Sundays so it can move to a Sunday. Keep that in mind when you do your travel planning. It's always worth when you travel to the TT to maybe come a couple of days early. Um, they will not start earlier, but it's, you know, come for the pre-races, which are, of course, a day before the official start of practice week. Or to always stay a couple of days later. A, your return ticket will be cheaper because you're avoiding the rush just after senior day. And B, they may be moving races from, for example, the Saturday to the Sunday. And then, you know, there can be a bit of a mad rush to get everything done and to leave the island. And of course, if you booked your ticket, to leave right after senior race day and the race day is moved or any other of the race days and they are moved then you may miss the race you came for so always worth you know having a bit of flexibility in your travel plans and obviously it's always worth keeping an eye on the schedule because race dates and times can change of course you can stay up to date for all the different news sources online and with the lovely program now that one's worth pointing out this year a they made two changes to it a it's smaller it's now in a 
five-ish format, so it's not quite as awkward to carry around anymore, and you can just shove it in your jacket when you ride, which is really good. And B, they actually made it cheaper. Believe it or not, something has gotten cheaper. It used to be 18 pounds, now it's 10 quid. Fantastic value for money, has all your race cards, all your entries, you can still write your own times in it. Really awesome job done by the guys here. I'm really, you know, love it to see that they put some thought into this. You can buy that in any news agent, supermarket, and you know, all over the island. And I think you can also buy it online. As for the circuit itself, there's not much more to say that hasn't been set before anywhere else. It's 37.75 miles of public roads, one lap of the island more or less, from Douglas to Ramsey along the flat, then back to Douglas over the mountain. Roads are closed for racing. I'll mention that in the next chapter, what it's about roads closed and all those sort of things. And also the next chapter is probably the most important one and that's spectating. Spectating at the TT is very different to watching a race at a short circuit, as anyone who has ever been here will happily tell you. For starters, the TT Mountain Circuit, which is the current track that is being used for the Tourist Trophy races, uh, it's basically a one whole lap of the island. It's 37.75 miles of public roads, just like the one here behind me. That's the stretch going down to Governor's Bridge at the end of the lap in Douglas. And basically the roads are being closed for racing and then the bikes fly down here. The beauty of the setup is of course that as a spectator, you can simply turn up at any publicly accessible point along the track, along the roads, and you can watch the racing there for free. There are organized areas and there are grandstands where people will charge you. Uh, some are government run, some are just, you know, pubs and, and private people putting seating there and charging a little bit or some don't charge. So always check when you see what looks like organized seating, what the score is with, with payment. But generally, and the, and the best thing about the TT really is the fact that you can watch it for free from uh, anywhere along the track, more or less, and that you can get very, very close. I mean, as you can see here, I'm very close to the track. And there are areas where you can get even closer. Some of the things you may want to keep in mind when spectating at the TT, especially if you're a first-time visitor, are that the Isle of Man is located in the middle of the Irish Sea, and that means the weather here is absolutely unpredictable. We had TTs where it's nothing but glorious sunshine, and we had TTs where it's nothing but an absolute washout. And very often we do get both scenarios in the same day. So do bring clothing that uh, accounts for both, and also be prepared that it's always windy, especially if you're spectating up uh, on the mountain, I mean, that we have even have corners, they're called Windy Corner. It's not called that for nothing. So there's always, you know, it's always windy if you're, if you're out on the track somewhere. Also, spectating at TTT is usually a bit of a lengthy affair. So unless you're in Douglas, where you can, you know, quickly nip out, watch for five minutes at the roadside and then go back home. Um, if you are somewhere further out in the countryside, many of the, the points where you can spectate become uh, inaccessible or difficult to access once the roads close and you may be stuck in your location for an extended period of time, many hours. The TT, of course, has a schedule, but it hardly ever runs tightly to that schedule because it's such a long track and there are so many things that can happen. There are accidents before the race that delay things. Uh, then the track may be wet and they wait for it to dry. There may be delays of, of other nature. So the one thing you get really, really good at when you watch the TT is waiting and just basically being patient. So do be prepared that this is you know, more or less a half day or maybe a full day event rather than something where you turn up, watch a few minutes and leave. But do bring along you know, your sunscreen, water, a power bank for your phone, some food and anything you need to basically make a, make a good day out of watching the races. Of course, you're welcome to take as many pictures and videos as you want, but please do not use selfie sticks for obvious reasons. They are prohibited. We still see people doing it. If you see someone doing it, please politely tell them not to do it because I mean, I don't need to tell you what it would look like if a rider hits a selfie stick at the speeds there during down here. Oh, and last but not least, before I forget it, the whole of the Isle of Man TT course is, of course, a strict no drone zone for two hopefully quite obvious reasons. Number one, no rider wants to be kissed in the face at 200 miles an hour with your drone. And number two, the rescue helicopters that are stationed all around the course cannot fly if there is a drone in the area. So if you're a responsible drone owner, you'll be aware of all the different rules that apply to this anyway. But yeah, just in case you're not and you want to bring your little toy over, drones are absolutely not allowed anywhere near the TT course. One of the most prominent places to watch the races from is of course here in Douglas at the TT Grandstand along Glen Clutchery Road. This is the start and finish straight. It's also the pit stop, uh, the start line and the podium. So if you watch from the grandstand you get basically the best bits of all the action. Now not too long ago, certainly since I followed the TT, it was actually free to watch the practices from the grandstand. You didn't need a ticket, you just walked up, sat there and watched. Um, Quite recently, they introduced tickets for practice week, so you now have to pay for practice and for race week. 
Having said that, it's still, I think, really, really good value for what it is, especially compared to many other lesser motorsport events. And I do recommend, so here's the URL to buy your tickets at, I do recommend you buy them quite quickly because they do sell out and they do sell out fast because this is one of the best, if not the best spots to watch if you want to see, you know, the start, finish and, and be really right in the middle of the action. The area you see here behind me that's empty right now will soon be bustling with bikes and, and people and there'll be tons of motorhomes and Parc Fermé right here because this is part of the paddock and it's definitely a must experience part of any spectating experience at the TT. Unlike at events like Formula One or MotoGP where you need a VIP ticket and a second mortgage to get anywhere near the start, the TT famously is very very open and you can just walk around the paddock, you can see the riders, speak to them, watch the mechanics work and there's no snobbery about it, you know, and that's one of the real big things that I love about the TT is that you can just walk around the paddock and see the machines and smell the fuel and, and really feel involved with it. So if you are spectating, uh, even if you're not in Douglas, you know, you definitely need to come down to Douglas at least once to, to experience this area, walk through the paddock and, and really be very close to the action. Um, usually every time when I'm here I do make videos and a bit of a paddock walk around so if you can't make it you know I'm going to try and give you an impression of what it's like. I'll link to one here so you can see what it looks like in the past. This whole area is going to be filled with life very soon and it's definitely a must experience part of any TT spectating experience. Where I'm standing right now will very soon be the TT VIP tent again. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of the whole TT VIP idea. For me, TT means sitting on a hatch in the countryside with a beer in my hand, the radio in my ear, and watching bikes fly by two or three feet away from me. However, I appreciate some people like to have a glass of champagne and some canapes while watching the bikes fly down Glen Clutchery Road. This is going to be right for you. I'm going to put the URL on the bottom here if you want to check out VIP packages. Um, they do sell out, so, you know, if, I'm not sure if you, if you can still get some, but give it a go if you want to treat yourself or have a bit of a special experience. Of course, these packages are also good earners for the Isle of Man. Um, the TT is an important economic event for the island. You have to always remember that. And, you know, it's great when people are willing to pay a little bit more for that special experience. It helps to, to keep the TT running. It's expensive to put all this on. One of the greatest things about the TT is, of course, the fact that the races are carried out on public roads and therefore you can simply spectate for free on many of the hundreds and thousands of viewing spots around the course, such as one of my favorite ones, which is this one here, the bottom of Bray Hill. Now it's impossible to tell you which one is the absolute best spot to watch anywhere around the course, because there are simply too many and everyone has their own favorites. Maybe you know, post yours in the comments if you've been here before and you have a spot that you really enjoyed. If you are in Douglas and you want to watch from here, some of the spots definitely worth mentioning are uh, top of Bray Hill and basically Nobles Park, some Ninians and the top of Bray Hill where you can stand for free at the side of the road. The church usually opens their area as well. They appreciate a little donation and if you buy some coffee and cake there, but otherwise it's free. Of course here, my favorite spot, the bottom of Bray Hill. This was where I watched the races for the very first time and anyone who watches the races here for the very first time is just blown away by the bikes going through the compression. It's amazing. Um, of course, a bit further down, Quarter Bridge is a great free spot to watch. Nice slow corner. And then if you want to spend a bit of money, uh, Bradham Bridge has a wonderful grandstand area by the church um, with the trees. Uh, that's always a wonderful spot to sit. And well, all the way around the 37 and three quarter miles, of course, there are thousands of other spots where you can uh, sit and watch the races for free. If you're completely new to the TT and really not sure where to watch the racing from on your first visit to the island, then you can always try some of the classic viewing spots over here. Outside of Douglas, I would say these certainly include Glen Helen, uh, Barragaro, where they go down past the wall, famous shot. Of course, uh, Kirk Michael, where they go through the village, there are various viewing spots along there. Then Balaf Bridge, where the bikes jump, that's very unusual and a very popular corner. Then you go in uh, towards Solby Bridge, where it's a nice slow right-hander and then going past Ginger Hall, which is a nice pub to hang out at. Then you're going into Ramsey, where of course Parliament Square is extremely popular, a very slow corner, pubs on either side, perfect viewing spot. Up going onto the mountain, Ramsey Hairpin is nice. You can walk uh, the back roads towards it and further down in Ramsey also May Hill is worth going to. Then you're going up on the mountain to the famous Gooseneck, which is where I am right now. Of course, plenty of viewing spots along the mountain, but keep in mind that you may be stuck here because the mountain road is pretty much the only way up and down and that will be closed during racing. 
Then when you come down from the mountain, I uh, have to mention the famous Kreknabar pub, the, the beautiful shot where the bikes you know, come towards the pub and then go down. You have the view of, of two long straights. Uh, the area there, some of it you can watch for free, some of it I think they will charge, or certainly if you're in the pub you, you may be charged or expected to eat, but it's a, it's a wonderful spot. A bit further down into Douglas again, Hillbury, then signpost corner, and then of course coming down to the slowest corner, just before the finish, and that's Governor's Dip and Governor's Bridge. Uh, it's the slowest corner on the course, so if your camera isn't very good, or you want something easy to reach within Douglas, uh, that's the spot for you to go. And then of course you're going on to the start and finish, and then you know you to go back down to what I mentioned before, Bray Hill, Quarter Bridge, Braddon Bridge. So these are sort of some of the classic spots, but everyone has their absolute favorites. And if you're wondering how to find those spots along uh, 37 miles of track, I've recently done a slow lap in a car off the TT course, pointing out all the named corners and all the milestones. And I'm gonna put the link here and you can basically just watch that video and then you know exactly where on the course these spots are because it's if you just go by the, the maps that you can Google, it's often not clear. So, you know, check out that video and then you have a better idea of the whole course and where maybe a really good viewing spot is. One very important topic when it comes to spectating is that of restricted and prohibited areas. And you can actually see one here behind me where the yellow tape is and the sign. Wherever you see these, uh, do not enter them. They are restricted for a reason. Uh, basically safety because it is where um, if a bike does come off it is most likely to go. Now the number of restricted and prohibited areas has grown over the years there never used to be this many. I guess health and safety is kind of catching up with us too here but as I said do not enter them. If you do enter them you will be advised either by a marshal or anyone who's nearby uh, to move. If you don't move they will radio race control and then you know, they may call the police out you may get arrested or you may lead to uh, racing being delayed or suspended because of you. And that's the good scenarios. Of course, the worst thing that can happen is that you will get hit by a bike uh, when you stand there, you know, because it is where you are basically in the firing line. So wherever you see these, there's always a sign. Uh, there's not always yellow tape, but there's always signs, the triangle signs that says prohibited areas. And there will be also usually a map next to it that tells you exactly where the restricted area is. There's also a map online. I'm gonna link to it in the description so you can uh, check if you're in doubt. The TT quite simply couldn't take place without the help of the marshals. Called the Orange Army, they have their headquarter here behind the grandstand in Douglas and they are an absolutely integral part of the races. There are over 900 marshals and they are located at positions all around the track. They are all volunteers or the vast majority and most of them aren't from the Isle of Man. They are actually coming over as visitors and then they come here, they put on their orange vest and they become part of the races and part of the event. They are always looking for new members so I'm going to put the URL in here if you want to join them. You do get full training, you're not going to be sent out on your own, you'll be with experienced marshals. And and if you not only want to watch the races, but you also want to help run them and help be part of the races, then this is a wonderful way to do that. And a great way to join a very tight-knit community and, you know, just a great bunch of people who help make the TT happen. On the same lines, if you are a spectator somewhere along the track and you happen to interact with the marshals, so they interact with you in any way, please do be nice and respectful to them. If they give you instructions, they have reasons to do so. You may be standing in a prohibited area without realizing it, or there may be some other reasons why they, you know, for example, ask you not to stand somewhere or not to do certain things. Um, they're there for a reason, they're there for safety, okay? And they know what they're doing. They're usually at the same spot every year, they know their patch, and they know that if they tell you something, there's a reason behind it. Uh, if there is any kind of trouble they have radios so they can radio race control and then they can send out the police or they can suspend racing and you know we don't want that also if you notice something wrong along the track that maybe the marshals haven't seen yet uh, you know maybe debris on the track or people crossing or any kind of thing that you think affects the safety of the races do alert the nearest marshal they have radios they have flags so if there is for example debris on the road for, some, for something got swiped onto the road um, the flag marshals can then put the flags out, warn the racers, and we can keep things as safely as possible. So, but yes, the, the Orange Army, the marshals, are definitely an absolute vital part of TTT. You give them a wave when you see them everywhere, and they have sometimes a very tough job, especially if you're up on the mountain where you have to stand all day on your positions and to help make the races uh, the success they are. And I have the deepest respect for them, and, you know, just be nice to them because they make TT happen. One important aspect of spectating that I have to mention here is that of road closures. Now the TT is carried out on public roads, that's Glen Crutchery Road here behind me, the start line is just sort of half a mile that way. When the time comes, and it's always a set time every day, that the road closures go up. Basically what happens is there are barriers at every junction all around the course, there are thousands of them, 
and there are the little road close signs that you see here they go up the moment they go up it is not a public road anymore it becomes a racetrack now i do know that in certain other events elsewhere um, it may either be permitted or at least tolerated that people still cross the track say between competitors or before the racing starts or you know on rally stages that you can quickly uh, hop across to the other side at the tt it's a big big it's probably the biggest no as a spectator and as a visitor do not step on the track do not cross the track do not walk along the pavement when the when the roads are closed it is not a public road anymore it is a racetrack if you are caught you will be arrested it will mean the end of your tt but that really is you know the least bad outcome out of it the reason you're not allowed to cross is of course safety the tt is an insanely fast event and if for one second you think like, oh, I'm going to hear the bikes coming, um, you know, I can see them, I'll be fine. The answer is absolutely, you will not, absolutely no. And I can give you a, a personal example um, of that. A few years ago when I worked for North One, we filmed, uh, I think it was Keith Amos crash at, at Union Mills, very slow speed corner, uh, the road was wet, he came off. That was maybe a 40, 50 mile an hour corner. He slid past us, luckily he didn't hit us. We would not have had a chance to jump out of the way, just would not. From the time that we heard the bike coming to the bike sliding past us was less than a second. And that's a very slow bit. So if you try and cross here, you wouldn't even hear the bike before it hits you. So please, if you see the roads are closed, don't cross them, don't walk along them, don't even think about it. It's really, it's seriously the biggest no-no you can do. If you see someone else do it, Alert the marshals anywhere nearby, shout at them, uh, you know, tell them to get off the track. If you do have to cross the track, there are a number of footbridges and there is, of course, the access road, which is pretty much the only way to get in and out of the course when roads are closed with any kind of vehicle. There are also official crossing points that are being opened. For example, if there's a break in racing, if there's a lengthy delay for whatever reason, they may choose to open official crossing points for cars and pedestrians and then you can cross the track but unless there's an official crossing point unless the roads are declared open do not step on the track do not cross it do not walk along it it is absolutely ludicrously dangerous and you will get into trouble at the end of every day at the end of racing every day uh, there's a thing called the roads open car once that car passes your location you uh, can step on the road again it's a public road again before you see the roads open car even if the racing is gone you're not allowed to step on track so that's as simple as that so while I'm driving down to Ramsey to show you the Motor Museum, which is definitely worth checking out when you're over here for TT, uh, let's quickly go through some of the other bits that may be relevant for you when you come here to visit for the races. Now, if you have watched my other video called um, Moving to the Isle of Man FAQ, the hour long one, that's pretty detailed, I'll link to it here, then you'll know the answers to some of these things already. If you haven't and you're just here for TT, then let me quickly go through the, the main things that you may want to know. So let's start with getting here. There's only two ways, either by sea or by air. By sea, it's with a steam packet. I'll put the URL here and in the description. And by air, it um, well, kind of constantly changes. We have an open skies policy, so you never know which airlines are flying at which time. This is the airport URL. You can simply go on the airport website and have a look who's flying where at the moment. We have recently gotten some routes back to Heathrow and to London City, which is nice. Um, other flights from here are with EasyJet to places like Gatwick and Manchester. And I think there are a few flights to Scotland as well. So your best bet here really is to check out the, the website and see what's available. But word of warning, while I'm recording this, we are something like 20 days away from TT. Our tickets, sea and air tickets do sell out. And of course, if you still get some, they will be very expensive. This is the most expensive time of the year to travel to the Isle of Man. No surprise there. So if you haven't booked yet, don't be surprised if uh, it's sold out. Generally, if you want to come here, it's always worth planning a year ahead. Uh, the steam packet usually if you can't make it this year and you want to come next year, keep an eye on the Steam Packet website. They open reservations and deposits for next year very shortly after the TT this year. So it's definitely worth signing up to their newsletter and so you, so you get an alert when the tickets for next year become available because they do sell out really fast. The boats have limited capacity. By law, they can only carry so many passengers. And you know, once it's full, it's full. And once you are here, then of course you want to get around. Um, to be blunt, the best way to get around the island is with your own transport, especially during TT. We get a car. There are rental car companies still here. I think some have folded during Corona, but you should still be able to get one. Again, most expensive time of the year, so I do expect to pay top dollar for it. If you bring your own car, your own bike, it's probably the best way to do it. We do have a very nice bus service. However, that is um, not going everywhere all the time. 
so it's not like a big city where you can you know catch a bus every 10 minutes to go to even the remote places so you have to plan that here's the bus website um, have a look around there they do have tourist uh, tickets tourist passes uh, that you can buy that are valid for 70 days 14 days so you pay once and you can use pretty much everything of course this being high season now our touristy uh, trains are also going again so if you want to use a steam train to go somewhere that's uh, going again Again, go on this URL to book your tickets and of course the electric railway that goes uh, along the coast from Douglas to Ramsey and the Snaefell railway that goes up onto Snaefell Mountain. So if you, you know, want to check that out, um, again, the URL is here. Those things are more like touristy things though. They're, you can get around with them by all means, but they don't you know, run in like 10 minute frequency or something. So it's, take your time, okay? The, the slogan of the Isle of Man is trade allure and that means time enough. So we live that. A quick note for any EV drivers coming over for TT, the Isle of Man is of course absolutely perfect for electric cars, as I mentioned in this video, that could do with a few more views, thank you. When you come over here, just make sure you download the PodPoint app, because PodPoint is the only public charging network supported on the Isle of Man. That's because the Manx Utilities Authority, the government-owned electricity provider, has made the decision to only work with one network provider because the island's quite small and there is little point having, you know, two, three, four, five different ones competing over here. There are plenty of pop point chargers all over the place. Unfortunately, the speeds are still very low. The fastest charger we have is the 50 kilowatt charger at the sea terminal in Douglas, and you're not going to find anything faster than that. All other ones are either 7 kilowatt or 22 kilowatt points. Uh, they are all over the place at the side of the road and they're all marked in the pod point app the isle of man is still kind of playing catch up with evs so most of the time you won't have a problem getting a parking space and charging you may get iced here and there that happens unfortunately more and more especially in places like peel and outside of douglas where parking enforcement is not as strict uh, you do may find ice vehicles blocking an EV space and then you can't charge and there's there isn't even much you can do in terms of enforcement. The only place where they can enforce is in Douglas. If you park in an ice and if you park in an EV space on Douglas Promenade for example then you will get a ticket because we have the legislation in place. There are no proper Tesla superchargers on the Isle of Man with the exception of the Motor Museum in Derby. They do have an array but I'm not sure because I've never actually asked them um, how much power is going into them if they are proper superchargers or if they just, just charge at a lower rate but there are chargers in Derby and they are not on the PodPoint app so if you go to the Motor Museum they have electric chargers outside Tesla and they have um, a normal one which I think is a 7 or a 22 kilowatt like a privately owned one just bring your type 2 cable or whatever you have and uh, plug yourself in they may not work when you get there so if they don't just go inside and ask them to switch them on and they will flick the switch and they work but yeah, other than that, you will need pop point. You won't have a problem driving around. The island is very small. I'm using an i3 with range extender. My actual electric range on a good day with sunshine is between 70 and 80 miles. I've never experienced range anxiety over here ever. So, you know, it's a perfect place for your EV and you're gonna enjoy driving it here. So when it comes to healthcare, if you are from the UK and you need medical treatment over here, let's hope you don't, but just in case you do, we have a reciprocal agreement. I always struggle with that word. We have an agreement with the UK that you can have healthcare here if you are a UK resident and it's free of charge, just like it is in the UK through the NHS. Word of warning, this is limited to six months. So if God forbid you have a, a more serious accident here, and you have to stay on the island for more than six months for treatment um, in hospital this has happened to a manx lady recently in the uk then you may end up with a bill otherwise if you're a uk resident and you come here and you need medical treatment you won't needless to say emergency number is the same 999 anything non-emergency you can phone uh, usually police headquarters can help you 631212 keep the emergency numbers free as much as possible please because tt is mad busy for them we have a hospital at douglas where you can go with an a e again expected to be busy doing tt we have a cottage hospital in ramsey which is usually a little less busy so if you can make it there and it is nothing really serious uh, go there um, I'll put the, the contact details in here and also in the description below. Also out of hours we have what is called METS, uh, Manx Emergency Doctor Service. I'll put the phone number here again. So if you need uh, anything that's not acute, 
but can't wait until the morning, then phone Matt and they will be able to help you. If you are not from the UK, from further afield, Germany or America or somewhere else, um, yeah, you, it's very strongly advisable that you get your own health insurance because you may be presented with a bill. Now the NHS of course is famously generous, but if you don't have cover in some sort of way, they, they may bill you for it. When it comes to phone and internet, uh, if you're from the UK, even though we are part of the British Isles, being a crown dependency, you will find that when you come over here, your mobile provider from the UK will treat the Isle of Man as a roaming destination. So do check your roaming packages, which most these days have you know, quite generous uh, uh, packages included, but just do check that you're covered. Of course, the same goes with anyone coming from further afield, from the EU or from abroad. The Isle of Man is not just Britain. Some mobile providers will treat it as, you know, super mega offshore, mega expensive tariff. So do check with your mobile provider before you come here and switch on data roaming because you may get a nasty surprise. If you want to buy a local SIM card, there are two main providers. One is Manx Telecom and one is Shore. Both have shops in Strand Street in Douglas where you can just walk in and buy a pay-as-you-go uh, SIM card. There's no need for any passport ID or anything. I believe Shaw has still has a package where you pay five quid for five gigabyte or something that used to be the cheapest. So if you if you want to you know go down that way and you don't have data roaming, just hop into town, buy a SIM, stick it in. Do expect the network to be congested, especially if you're in places like the Grandstand or you know where there's a lot of people. It's gotten better over the years, and usually they have um, a lot of, of free Wi-Fi zones as well, especially around the Grandstand. I think Shaw is sponsoring it. They usually put in a, a quite decent uh, Wi-Fi. Look out for public Wi-Fi if you're in organized spectator places. Other than that, most of the island has 4G coverage. Now, if you're somewhere out in the sticks, it may not be super mega fast. You can tell them on the mountain road, no speed limit here. So yeah, don't expect it to be super mega fast if you're out in the sticks somewhere. But usually your speeds are pretty decent with, with 4G over here. Now, how this is gonna work this year when they fire up their uh, TT Plus streaming service, and you know, basically stream it live and have thousands of people um, switching into what is essentially a Vimeo HD video stream. We're gonna see. Usually the network here is, is reasonable, but we get you know, 35,000 additional mobile users coming over. So, well, we'll have to wait and see. We've never done that. But generally, you know, mobile reception and Wi-Fi over here is not a problem. Most people have uh, broadband at home. We have fiber in most places, so you'll be fine. So while I'm enjoying a wonderful empty mountain road on my way to Ramsey, let's also have a quick look at the different ways you can stay over here. So accommodation, there's a few main ways. Of course, you can book a hotel. Again, it's May already now. It's gonna be hard to find any hotel rooms. If you find some, they're gonna be at an absolute premium. Prices do go up. This is the, the two most busy weeks of the year for the island. This is where everyone makes money. And yes, prices do go up. It's just, you know, it's the way, it's the nature of the beast. A route to hotel room that will cost you less than 100 quid during the year. Uh, will cost you two or three hundred quid during TT. It's just the way it is. Now the other way, of course, is um, there's a few Airbnbs which you can try, but there's also what we have over here, what is called homestay. Homestay is an official scheme of the government where people register their properties and can then, up to a certain limits, uh, let people stay in their houses, in their spare room, basically. And the money that is earned from there is tax-free up to a certain limit to encourage people to do that, because we know that as an island, uh, we simply do not have enough hotel rooms and campsites to accommodate all the, you know, sometimes 35, 40,000 or more visitors that come here during TET. Now, when you book homestay, it's very, very important that you check that whatever house you rent with or whoever you stay with is actually officially registered with homestay. It's for your own safety and security. There are certain uh, parameters that homestay houses have to adhere to so that they have to you know they have to have smoke detectors uh, you're only allowed to stay uh, on certain floors so, so it can't be a basement flat uh, it can, can't be more than six people and so on so there are certain safety measures in place and so make sure that your accommodation when you book homestay is officially homestay accredited I'll put the URL here and also in the descriptions if you want to check because there are a lot of people who just let people stay in their houses and they're not homestay accredited and if something happens you don't really have any protection when it comes to prices for homestay there are there, there's guidance um, i think the single guidance oh, isn't that nice so when it comes to prices for homestay there's just guidance there's no fixed price people can more or less charge what they want 
I think the guidance still is about 25 quid a head for a single individual. Some charge more, some charge less. Some offer breakfast, uh, your continental, some make your full breakfast. Most people are good and nice and just earn a bit of money on top. Some are rip-off merchants. Yeah, unfortunately, there are you know bad people that are greedy doing TT or that are too greedy, put it that way. Uh, you can always report them to Homestay, but most are really nice and Homestay is one of the cheapest ways to experience TT. So go on the Homestay website, have a look if something's still available. Another way to stay here is of course camping. There are multiple campsites that you can check out. Some of them are right at the track, so you don't have far to go. But there's everything from normal camping to glamping with like posh uh, campsites. And there's also the TT village, which is on the side of the old prison, just behind the grandstand in Douglas. Um, I'll, I'll put the link here if I find it. That's a very nice way to stay uh, in Douglas. It's sort of like a pop-up hotel kind of thing. Probably isn't the cheapest way to stay but you're right in Douglas, you're right near the grandstand so uh, it's, it's a good place. Of course when it comes to traveling to the Isle of Man we also have to have a quick look at the coronavirus situation. At the time that I'm recording this video which is about two weeks before TT there are currently no real restrictions on the Isle of Man regarding Corona. Basically, if you can travel to the UK, you can travel on freely to the Isle of Man. There are no separate locator forms here anymore. There is no need to show any test certificate or vaccination certificate upon arrival. There's also no need to wear masks anymore on the island in public, with the only exception being healthcare settings at the moment, because the virus is still very much around and it's the Omicron variant, or I think it is the Omicron variant, the one without the symptoms. So a lot of people have it, um, but most people here are vaccinated, most also had a booster, so it's kind of, it's the live with it phase that we're in. You don't have to wear masks anymore in the shop, but you have to wear them if you go to A&E, to a hospital or see your doctor. Of course, you're welcome to wear a mask uh, if you prefer to do so. If you're vulnerable, if, if you want to take the precaution, you're not going to get any funny looks. Plenty of people still wear masks in shops. I believe you can also still get free LFTs in pharmacies. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I went to pharmacy the other day and there was one display that says buy one and then there was another display that said get one for free. I believe they are still free if you need any, any pharmacy has them. PCR tests are only done, I think, occasionally anymore. I don't even know the circumstances when you would need one. So in everyday life, when you're here as a visitor, it will feel very much as if there is no corona. But of course, you are welcome to take your own precaution because the virus is still around. Now, one big change they have done for this year is they will do live coverage of the TT. Uh, that is live video coverage. They've been talking about this for many years. I used to work for North One, which was the company that had the contract to film the TT before uh, Greenlight got it back. Greenlight is the, currently the local firm uh, filming the TT. And you know, even back then, that's almost 10 years now pretty much, um, they were talking about uh, broadcasting the TT live. It's an immensely challenging project and it's, it's amazing that they're trying it. Um, I'm very much looking forward to seeing how, how that works. 37 and three quarter miles of track, 225 bends. A lot of track to cover this is you know more than just five cameras on a little short track you need dozens of cameras and they will do it uh, with something called tt plus i'll put the link here for you to sign up 15 quid i think it costs 14.99 for the whole two weeks it's a one-off payment gives you the six practice days the four race days and a lot of uh, footage around it sounds like really good value to me they did a really good job there uh, if that works it's going to be probably you know one of the best value for money um, a spectator or, or a viewing packages in motorsport, I'd say. It's pretty good. This will allow you to watch the TT live. Now, basically what they used is they used Vimeo's um, commercial platform. Vimeo has a professional platform that companies can rent to do their streaming or can, can uh, license to do their streaming, which is pretty much what it is. So Vimeo, of course, is a very high quality uh, video platform. So that's great. If this works and if you can really follow the races live, it could be an absolutely amazing thing, of course. The TT being the TT, do not expect it to run on schedule all of the time because it simply doesn't. A, lo a big challenge in the past why they've never done TT live on TV is because it's such an unpredictable event. Uh, a race may be scheduled for you know a couple of hours uh, running time, but you have absolutely no idea if it's really only going to run for a couple of hours. Um, the weather, crashes on the course, any other delays, marshals not in place, people standing in wrong places. One of the things you have to get used to when you follow the TT and watch it is you need to be very patient. Waiting is a firm part of the TT experience. 
and there are delays all of the time which makes it so very difficult to make this a live tv event now of course doing it as a live streaming event online that's a different thing but you know do expect there to be delays and it may not necessarily run to the schedule that they put up but i'm very much looking forward to seeing tt plus and, and seeing tt being streamed live around the world because it opens up a uh, new viewership of course it may cannibalize into you know what what you get uh, in terms of visitor numbers because some people may now say oh i've been already i've seen it live i don't need to go anymore if i can follow it on an official live channel now so i think they're going to cannibalize themselves a bit there but if you have never been here and you're watching it live really once in your life you need to come here and watch it in in person uh, watching it on tv or on a stream is absolutely nothing compared to to watching it in real life so yeah don't just watch it live if you can make it here do make it here and you know 14.99 for the whole tt coverage on tt plus is amazing uh, value and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the tt covered live on the subject of um speed limits and riding and driving on the isle of man while you're here for the tt uh, i think it's worth mentioning a few things for starters as you know we don't have a national speed limit does that mean you can ride like a maniac all around the isle of man all the time no it doesn't there's no speed limit over the mountain they're going to make the mountain one way again for tt it is still a public road even if it's one way even if there's no speed limit and you can go fast please keep in mind that not everyone's here on holiday people go about their daily lives they commute over the mountain they commute along the coast road along the tt course uh, you know they're coming to work they're going to school supermarket and so on so be just mindful that not everyone is in the tt spirit as you are also only that there's no speed limit doesn't mean you can ride like a dick now the cops over here uh, are super fair compared to the, the police you get in the uk they really do have the, the manx mindset they police you know with the isle of man view and you will find them to be very fair firm but fair they're not spoil sports they are not here to raise revenue to tickets uh, you know they don't have quotas they don't get a cut or anything like that they are here to keep everyone self safe we have thousands of visitors on bikes and cars coming the roads are super busy these roads are dangerous even if you are used to uk roads i assure you isle of man roads are very very different uh, for starters you're allowed to drive a lot faster here and you know they police with a with a view that really where safety is the the primary concern they are also the guys who end up cleaning up when it goes wrong and when it goes wrong here it goes wrong horrendously and some of the accidents they've seen i don't wish on anyone having to to do that having to clean that up so when you come here many of you especially if you're a first-time visitor you'll be excited as larry to do your first lap of the tt course and all i'm asking you to do of course you can ignore me and say you know bugger off you idiot i know how to ride but take it from someone who's followed to tt for 20 years who loves the races who wants people to drive fast and have fun treat these roads with respect the tt course and especially the mountain road is a dangerous road uh, it will catch you out the softest thing you can hit when you get it wrong on the mountain is a sheep uh, but usually you will probably either hit a stone wall or um, you fall down a canyon or you will hit another rider or a car crashes over here hurt they hurt a lot and you don't want to end up you know um, in hospital or worse so please do treat these roads with respect do not think you're john mcginnis oh that's you john mcginnis thanks for watching you know don't do not think you're john mcginnis when you do your first lap of the course while we do not have a national speed limit we do certainly have speed limits and in town and in many stretches of the road outside of towns your only thing to do with them really is religiously stick to them during tt uh, a for safety and as i said these are public roads people go about their daily lives and b because the police will be out in force and they will use uh, speed guns we don't have fixed speed cameras still and i hope it continues like this so you know we're not like the uk we're not as car hating and greedy money grabbing but they will be out with speed guns uh, the police always brings over additional resources from the uk more cars and they will police where there are speed limits you can still have your blast over the mountain where there's no speed limit but whenever you know you come to areas where there are limits just just respect them religiously okay that's really the only thing you can do also um, i shouldn't have to say this but drink and drug driving is a big no the isle of man is very strict on these things um, i don't even know what the drink drive limit is because in my book you should not have any alcohol in your blood when you uh, 
take your bike out or go behind the wheel of your car um, not just during TT but especially during TT when the roads are so so busy the police will be out with breathalyzers and they recently now got the law changed and they have the devices to do drug swipes so they will drug swipe you now what you do in your private time I really don't care if it was after me you know cannabis should have been legalized a long time ago over here tax the stuff and sell it but if you use it while driving and you know they can prove it with their swipe um, you may lose your license and you may you know end up walking for the remainder of your TT visit so don't do it one very important thing also when it comes to uh, driving riding and spectating is to please not leave it to the last minute to go to your favorite viewing spot before the races start or before the roads close. We have it every year, I mean every year. You can set your watch after it, that uh, race day arrives, you know, any of the race days, everyone's ready, everyone's waiting. It's like, oh, come on, two o'clock, roads close, let's go. And there'll be an announcement from uh, race control. There will be a 30 minute delay or one hour delay because of an RTC on the track. And nine times out of 10, it is someone who left it too late to go to their favorite viewing spot, who hops in their car or on their bike and rushes to get to wherever they want to watch the races from. Because, of course, once the road is closed, uh, you know, many of the, the viewing spots, the good viewing spots are inaccessible. Please, for the love of Christ, leave in good time. Uh, the out of man's slogan motto is trade alert, it means time enough. Leave time enough to go to your favorite spot. We have a rush hour before roads closure where everyone's going to their favorite spot and not only is are the roads congested but people crash all the time uh, it wrecks your TT it, it delays racing it's just crap so you know please go to your viewing spots in good time I cannot say this enough because it happens every year and one thing you really have to get used to with TT anyway is waiting and you know bring a picnic basket and, and just sit at the side of the road and wait for half an hour longer for the race to start if the weather is nice there's nothing nicer than sitting out in the field and talking to people so yeah, please leave in, in good time to reach your favorite viewing spot. And don't be the person that delays racing because you're high-sided on the way to Creighton Bar or something, okay? Equally after racing, you know, don't just rush off. Everyone then rushes off to go to their places. So there's a bit of a rush hour after racing. You know, maybe leave it a bit until the roads are less congested. It's just safer and nicer for everyone. Uh, don't chase the roads open car. You're going to get done if you try and do that. You know take your time over here okay we, we love to take things slowly on the Isle of Man and there's no rush you have plenty of time to watch everything and do everything and you know trade alert time enough one thing I quickly want to add to the whole drive and ride safe topic is the fact that of course in the Isle of Man we drive on the left hand side of the road now if you're from the UK you can probably skip this chapter but if you're from continental Europe or from anywhere else where they drive on the right then uh, please watch on the reason I'm mentioning this is, um, you know, it's not going to take you very long to, to get used to driving on the left or riding on the left. A couple of days and, and you'll be fine. But what tends to happen, and this has actually happened, is people ride on the left, they get used to it, and then they take a break. They stop for lunch, they have a picnic, they watch the races, and after a few hours they hop back on their bike. And because it's so hard-coded in their brain from years of riding that you ride on the right, they set off on the wrong side of the road. And then bad things happen. There was at least one fatal accident where exactly this kind of thing has happened. So remind yourself and remind your friends if you're in a group especially after breaks and you know after times where your concentration may be getting weaker you know later in the day that we drive on the left be very very careful with lane discipline as well of course if you're not used to to driving on the left there is a tendency that maybe you go a bit too far to the right than you should I can only tell you enough you know, personally from my experience when I drive during TT a I drive uh, as little as possible I don't have to go somewhere I don't be a drive slower than normal or more careful than normal because it is just so busy and see I absolutely super religiously exercise lane discipline more than I normally do because there are so many blind corners here where where you can overlook someone and then you know bikes and cars and then you get a really bad accident yeah basically if you're not used to riding on the left you know remind yourself take it a little bit slower and and make sure you stay on the on the right, in this case, the left side of the road when you drive. We do actually have the little Linksfahren signs for all the German people who come over here. And they are actually uh, positioned on the right side of the road. So if they set off on the right side and they see that sign, hopefully they go to the left. But, you know, just remind yourself and, and stay safe when you ride here. When it comes to buying your TT merchandise and souvenirs, you of course have a lot of options. There'll be plenty of stalls behind the grandstand during the race period. But there's also a few shops in town, uh, primarily in Douglas. There's one TT merchandise shop at the south end of Strand Street in the middle of Douglas. 
a small one at the north end of Strand Street, just when you walk out back onto the prom. And there is their main store, which is further down on Douglas Promenade and which has probably the biggest selection of any TD merchandise on the island. As a special tip, this place also has a nice sales room upstairs where you can grab some good bargains from time to time, such as this wonderful jacket, which I got for 50% off right from here. The cheapest place to buy TT souvenirs of all sorts is probably the book company store here in Strand Street and Douglas. It's right at the start of Strand Street, uh, where you come in from the famous Roundels and from the Sefton Hotel. They have all sorts of things from books to beer mats to whatever you fancy, and they're usually quite cheap. If you're after food and grocery shopping, then we have a few options for you. There is one Tesco Superstore on the Isle of Man, and that is based in Douglas. There are no other Tesco Express or anything like that. It's usually open, I think, from about 8 a.m. till 11 p.m., uh, a little early on Sundays. I think it closes at 6, but they may change that for TT. Anyway, it's down in downtown Douglas, stocks the usual UK range of stuff. Uh, we have our own local chain of supermarkets called ShopRite, uh, proudly locally owned is their slogan. Their focus is a bit more on local produce, so where Tesco just has the usual UK range. If you are after trying you know, more local meats and, and products, uh, do try ShopRite. They have stores in Douglas, in Port Erin, in Ramsey, in Peel, and a couple of other locations. Then we have the usual small uh, spa convenience stores, independent convenience stores, and so on, so you're not going to go hungry. Unfortunately, we don't have any Sainsbury's, any Aldi's, any Lidl's, and you know, any of the any Morrison's or whatever uh, other UK chains there are. There is a Marks and Spencer, and that has a food hall. It's also in the middle of Douglas, so if you're a bit more posh, uh, go get your sandwiches from there. If you need any camping equipment, then there's Jack stores. They have stores in Douglas and Strand Street and in Ramsey. They have a lot of like household stuff, camping stuff and whatnot. Also right opposite the Jack store in Douglas is Deals, which is basically pound land, except on the Isle of Man, instead of one pound, everything costs one pound 20. But they usually have a lot of stuff as well. Also Tesco is getting in a lot of stuff for TT, like camping things and sleeping bags and whatnot. So check that out, it's usually cheap. And a lot of the little spa, if you see them somewhere, they also seem to have quite a bit of camping stuff, whatever you may need for your barbecue, you know, your throwaway barbecue, all that kind of stuff. Also, you can always check out the B&Q, maybe they have stuff as well. On the booze front, the traditional off-license, as you may know it from the UK, still is a rarity over here. Usually it's just the spa and all the supermarkets selling booze. Your cheapest place to get alcohol most likely is Tesco or ShopRite. But there are two other places I'd recommend you check out. One of them is the wine cellar along Peel Road. So if you want a little nicer alcohol, then you know you probably go there, nice bottle of wine or something, go there, sales service is really good, then all the stuff. And the other one is called Bottle Monkey. It's in Douglas. And again, for all of these shops, I'm gonna put the coordinates and the details below. Uh, Bottle Monkey is basically one guy who opened a little beer shop and he has a number of really awesome beers there, including last time I checked, he did have Augustina. So if you want some real beer, that's beer from Bavaria, then do check out Bottle Monkey. On the food front, obviously, you're gonna be spoiled for choice over here. The Isle of Man is really varied these days. Starting with the burger vans that you find behind the grandstand, obviously, they're gonna be the most exp uh, expensive option if you ride by the track because you're paying, well, you're paying motorsport event prices, right? By the way, what you see there in the background is the 1886 big stage being built. They just bought it in the containers and things. So that's where Jesse J and Madness and those will be playing. So back to food. Um, yeah, obviously you have your burger vans and your chippies and there's you know plenty over here, not a problem. A few of the recommendations from my own experience that I would give you that I know are nice places to try out are certainly uh, Rio's on Douglas Promenade. It's a Brazilian barbecue, all you can eat. If you're after a proper meat coma, that is the place to go. For steaks, I would try Meeting, which is a steakhouse up the road and the old courthouse now, they just moved. They have really good steaks. For Italian foods, there's three choices that I really like. One is just pizza and pasta on North Key in Douglas. And the other one is Paparazzi and then La Piazza, two Italian places also both in Douglas. Have been for years great quality food you can never go wrong if you feel a little bit posh and you want to spend some more money then head to wind down we have excellent food but it is expensive or more expensive than your average meal and 40 north is also pretty good if you're after a proper burger then i would recommend you try dream bird also in douglas and if you want seafood then there's no better place than little fish cafe also on north key in douglas finally for other places on the island if you're in peel try philby's bistro by the harbor by the house of mananen 
if they're still open i think they were thinking of closing in june or july if they're still open definitely philby's is recommended if you're in ramsey then the good stuff is definitely a place you may want to check out if you're out and about and the niabel cafe is open where the famous cottages from the movie waking net divine then that's also definitely worth trying and if you're down at the sound at the uh, at the other end of the island where the you know the sound cafe and the calf of man is the Sound Cafe usually also has pretty good food, so if you're after more than just a coffee, then they do proper food as well. But to be honest, there are way too many choices that I could list them all. And, you know, the ones I mentioned, I just know from personal experience. I go there I, multiple times, I know they're good, so I can recommend them. But honestly, the whole you know, sort of TripAdvisor Google system works well over here. Just Google places to eat and then you'll, you'll quickly see, uh, you know, pretty good uh, ratings for them are pretty accurate ratings because the island is small and if the quality of a place is good then word gets around fast equally if the quality is bad then word also gets around fast but one thing is for sure you're not going to starve over here oh and before i forget it you of course have to try our national dish and that is chips cheese and gravy you get it in every chip shop and yeah you have to try it it's just a must do one of the must visit destinations when you're on the isle of man for the tt is definitely the tt museum which is part of the Motor Museum up here in Derby. Uh, it's a huge facility, it's purpose-built. It's been here for a number of years now. It's an absolutely wonderful place. And next to a, a wonderful display of all sorts of different cars from the owner's collection, it does hold a collection of over 300 motorbikes and many, many famous uh, TT and Manx Grand Prix machines from right back to the early 1900s up to modern machines are in there and you know this is an absolute heaven for anyone who, who loves motorbikes and loves the tt and wants to get really up close to the machines so derby is uh, north of ramsey so just you know make it a nice little day out right up here plenty of parking and plenty of bikes to look at so yeah definitely a visit to the tt museum in derby is should be top of your list of anything to do when you visit the isle of man for the tt there are way too many things on the Isle of Man to see, do and experience as if I could ever cover them all in one little video. So here's just a quick list of a few of the things you can do while you're on the Isle of Man for TT. Take a picture with the new Bee Gees statue along Douglas Promenade. You do know the Bee Gees were born here, right? Marvel at the now world famous roundel on Douglas Promenade. Is it a roundabout? Is it a junction? It's a mystery. Take a picture with the Joey Dunlop statue on the mountain road at the bungalow and then stop by at the Victory Cafe for some coffee and cake. Stop by the Guthrie's Memorial on the mountain for a panoramic shot of Ramsey, which is best done on days not as foggy as today. Visit the Manx Museum, it's free. Take a picture and enjoy the view from the Steve Hislop Memorial in Douglas. It's easy to find, it's right above the Manx Electric Railway sign. Have some Queenies or some Manx Kippers in Peel, followed by an ice cream from Davison's right next door. Go for a stroll around the beautiful Cragneesh village to see how people lived in days gone by. Then continue down the road to the Sound, where you can have coffee and a cake while enjoying spectacular views of the Calf of Man. Go for a stroll through the island's ancient capital of Castletown. And don't forget to visit Castle Russian too. Stop by for a picture at the famous Ferry Bridge. I'll let you in on a secret. This isn't actually the real one. If you want to know where the real one is, check out this video. Pop down to the famous beauty spot of Niabel where you can find the Waking Net Cottage and some of the best coastline views on the island. Come to Port Erin and climb Milner's Tower which gives you fantastic views over the Manx coastline. Then afterwards come back down into Port Erin, grab a pint and just sit on the beach and relax. Of course, there's a lot more to TT than just the races. And although the jet quad that you saw in that clip there won't be back, I think the last time he was here was, what, 10, 12 years ago, there are plenty of events worth checking out. Let's start with the Monster Fan Park, which I think will be up in Nobles Park again. It's sort of a fan area where there's a live stage with bands, there are bars, there's a big screen, performances. And basically it's right next to the grandstand and it's going to be a nice area again just to hang out during the day. There's always going to be something to look at and something to do. I believe that's going to be on until 11 p.m. at night. At least that's how long the uh, music license that we signed up for it is valid. Then if you are looking for the traditional Bushies tent in the bottleneck car park in Douglas, that's not back. Instead what they're doing again and what was very popular last time is the Bushies TT Village in the Villa Marina Gardens. That was wildly popular last time, very busy, very well received. So 
so they're doing it again this year. So if you hop down there, you're gonna see uh, the live stage, the tents, plenty of food, and just, you know, a really good place to hang out at night. I believe it's something like two pounds entry to get in, and then you buy whatever is inside. I'm gonna link to this and to everything else in the description to this video. So all the locations and website links and whatever you need to know, just look in the description. Finally, there's a brand new venue in Douglas that you may not have seen before if this is your first time back for TT and that is 1886 basically someone turned the old post office into a really swanky pub slash cocktail bar slash restaurant slash pretty awesome venue and they are going to put a huge live stage outside in the town square that's right outside their building so this is in central douglas basically opposite of where the old bushy's tent used to be near the sea terminal that area there has a capacity of 5,000 people and they have signed up some pretty big names to play there uh, the headliner is jesse J. Then Madness is going to be playing there, the Boomtown Longtails. We don't use the R word over here, so it is the Boomtown R word, but we call them Boomtown Longtails. And a number of other big acts will be there. And I'm also going to link to their ticket site from the description. A few of the other events you also may want to check out while you're over here. And there's a leaflet about these online, which I'm going to link to again from the description below. This is just a printed version. I'm going to read some of these off. Uh, definitely if you're down here in Peel, so on the 5th of June you're gonna have the Peel TT day and the motorcycle show, that's always an awesome event. On the same day we also have the beach racing in Douglas actually, so look out for low tide and we're gonna get the motorbikes and quads back out for some beach racing. That's very popular, it's just on Douglas Promenade on Douglas Beach. Then the next event you really don't want to miss is of course the Ramsey Sprint, 5th and 7th of June. Uh, along Murak Promenade in Ramsey. That's always a real big crowd favorite. Some awesome machines turning up for that one. Port Erin TT Fun Day on the 6th of June is also not to be missed. Also always super packed and if the, if the weather is nice and Port Erin is just awesome. On the 7th of June you want to be in Douglas because the Red Arrows will be doing their famous display over Douglas Bay. Word of warning for this one, traffic gets really really crazy when the Red Arrows come over. The best views are along Douglas Promenade and of course up on Douglas Head. If you're planning to go up on Douglas Head, go early, preferably walk up because they're probably going to close the road again and there's going to be no parking up there. The Red Arrow is definitely worth watching but you know plan your your travel. Uh, if you're down on Douglas Beach that's also a really good spot to watch and even if you're up on the grandstand you can probably still see the display but the best view is if you're down on Douglas Beach or on Douglas Head. Finally on the 10th of June to wrap it all up there's going to be the fireworks display again in the evening that's of course subject to the weather not being too bad and these are just some of the events that are going on during TT. I'm going to try and link to all the relevant websites below so you can check out all the other stuff that's there to do because there's plenty going on and it's not just the racing here it's a whole sort of two week where the island really comes to life and where there's a ton of things to do and to explore and basically to have really good fun on two or four wheels or whatever you're bringing over you know just enjoy your TT. Normally when I do my videos, you'll know that I tend to not involve external people such as people from government or anywhere else because I want it to be authentic and I want everything that I say about the Isle of Man to be for myself and not sound like a press release from some spokesperson. However, I think with the TT, it's time to make a change to that. And I would like to introduce you to Sergeant Michael Taylor from the Isle of Man Constabulary or to be precise from the Roads Policing Unit. Uh, basically, and I hate to say this, don't get this wrong, but I'm hoping that most visitors will not have to interact with you because that means something may have gone wrong during TT or would that be fair or is that a bit harsh to say? We're out and about around various parts of the course and, you know, we encourage people to interact with us on good levels you know what we don't want to do is we don't want to come across people who have been involved in a bump or driving recklessly or speeding around our island's roads you know we've got a fairly um, good rapport with the, lo um, with the locals and the visitors alike. And one, one thing I did mention in the video is that in the Isle of Man we have a very different approach to, well, to doing things and to policing than to the UK. It's not the same. What would you say the, the key differences are and what are the biggest challenges as where the TT is concerned? You know, the, the population of the island really does swell during TT week. Um, you know, we've got limited number of officers. Um, so all of our officers right across the force um, are subject to a leave embargo where they can't oh. go on leave. So it literally is all hands to the pumps. Wow. Um, my team swells from a team of five normally to a team of 24 in total to police the island's roads. Um, and obviously with an event such as the TT, with that then comes the issues of um, the increased traffic on our road, not just the visitors but also the locals because we often find that people are in a rush to get home when it's um, practice or 
race periods. Um, so we really are all hands to pump during TT. Uh, my team um, police the whole of the TT course. Um, in addition, they also police the East Coast um, road, which is used as um, a way of getting back to Ramsey by a lot of the bikers. And also this year we'll be concentrating some of our efforts on the slock. Okay, which is a really nice road. So I mentioned that also in the video that, you know, the mountain obviously doesn't have a speed limit famously it doesn't mean you should ride like mad but you can go a bit quicker there if, if conditions allow but when people see speed limits elsewhere i mean you guys are out and you're enforcing those speed limits because the island doesn't stop for tt right i mean there's normal people absolutely during tt we are robust with the enforcement when it comes to speed enforcement all the roads that have speed limits on them they've got them for a reason and a lot of these roads the reason why they do have them speed limits on is because of the data that we previously had shows that there's a high collision rate or there's been serious incidents or even worst case and um, fatals on there so they really are and um, there for a reason and we want um, locals and visitors to ensure that they adhere to them and if there's say two or three things that you really want visitors who come over to, to keep in mind where you know your view of things is concerned yeah what would you tell visitors we want people to come over here and um, have a good time enjoy the island enjoy the race and go back tell your friends and family you know the good time you've had we want people to come back you know so that's a big one have fun you know respect the roads and mm. um, when you're here and um, the Isle of Man it's still a living population and um, although it doubles and um, there's still locals going about, um, so practice week they'll be taking their children to school, they'll be driving home, um, so obviously respect the roads and also think of your friends and your family because if something does go wrong or you do choose to take risks, is ultimately they'll end up um, picking up the pieces for that. Well let's hope we're going to have a, a safe TT, it's definitely going to be a busy one from what, from what we can see. By the way, we're on top of the control tower. I'm going to cut some shots in. It's the best view you can have in town and you want a few people to have the key for it. <laughs> so thanks for, for getting us up here. So that's pretty much, you know, it's comments of what you think, or if you have any questions or comments. Uh, let's look forward to TT 2022 after two years break. It's about time we get the bikes back and I can't wait to, for it to start. And if you're over here and you see me somewhere in the paddock, I always wear the same clothes, you know, give me a shout and maybe go for a beer or something. Until then, I'll see you around.